So let us talk about multi-resolution image processing. Uh, multi-resolution pr uh, processing uh, representing and analyzing signals at more than one resolution is our multi-resolution processing. One form of this is uh, we have already seen it varying the scale uh, of this uh, Laplacian of Gaussian and Kenny operators because sigma was there the standard deviation and by varying sigma or 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma we can vary the scale of the operators and uh, there are very various important new tools for example we have image pyramids and wavelets we'll see these pyramids in just a short while and the applications are for feature detection and compression uh, this uh, is important because uh, what happens there is what we see how we see and our brain works so analysis uh, of human vision and observation from human vision and is in this analysis is actually independent of image scale so we recognize objects equally well regardless of the image size even if this is uh, shortened by a fifth size we are able to recognize so recognize recognition speed uh, that doesn't depend on image size because typical numbers are 0.1 second for recognition and 1 millisecond for neuron to fire actually and time for about 100 neurons will firing uh, will be you know obviously not time for linear propagation across images uh, there is a famous paper on these effects so what when we see you know we see it takes from 20 to 40 millisecond then to make visual uh, forms edges etc this takes some time so approximately this much time is taken to deci make decision and categorical uh, judgments is done uh, you know a lower bound on object recognition time has been determined to lie between this 80 to 100 millisecond in monkeys and the estimation for the processing speed based on categorization approach has been determined to be around 125 millisecond and uh, at 160 millisecond a post sensory uh, signal starts indicating that the lion's share uh, of object recognition is done in humans. So, sometimes objects are easier to recognize at lower spatial frequencies. If this is given, we can easily uh, determine via this. So, noisy sine wave at lower spatial frequency will be um, enough for us to recognize uh, the objects. This is also an example. Sometimes objects are easier to recognize at lower spatial frequencies. We don't require this. We are not able to recognize even. But if we make it small, uh, we will be able to recognize it more. So these are all the things related to uh, our, our human vision. So now coming to this multi-resolution pyramid, we construct a series of some sampled version of the same original image. We start with this n by n. And uh, we sum sample it means uh, you know you may in normal terms you may say you reduce it by n by two to n by two, then uh, doing it and continuing till the time we go to a single pixel, we can do it uh, because this is called the approximation pyramid. So we have an image, we do some approximation filtering, and then down sampling. This filtering is important. I'll show you why. Then we do this down sampling or this is the down sampler. This is how down, down sampling is done. And once this is done, what uh, there is a you know, level J approximation. Uh, but we can also do one thing. We can upsample it and we can use this interpolation filter and this uh, input image and this predicted image. We can find out the difference so we can find out the residual also. So this is, this is actually a pyramidal image structure and this is the system block diagram for creating it. So the total size of pyramid is not much larger than, larger than that of the original image and total size of n by n if you assume it to be n by n image. What we do this n by n is n by n. Then what we do we divide it by n by 2 n by 2 that is it will be n by 4 then n by 4, n by 4, that is n by 4 square and so on and so forth. So just adding one third of the space, we can, um, you know, place or we can store all these pyramids for differential uh, showing and perseverance, uh, perceiveness. 
So this is a multi-resolution pyramid structure. How this will be formed? The advantages are the size of object is smaller in reduced images, and there is maximum time for linear propagation across these images. And we can process the images in parallel to find one, of one with the most appropriate spatial frequency, right? For example, this is an image which we have subsampled it to n by two. And again, um, n this n by n this n by two n by two this n by four n by four. So here we use a Gaussian as a as a low pass filter before some subsampling. Why it is done? Because for uh, there is a limit of the frequency, uh, you know, beyond which this will not, this cannot be done. So we have to reduce the frequency by using this Gaussian uh, low pass filter. So down sampling and up sampling, we create a small image from a large image by down sampling, as I earlier shown you. This was the method. Approximation filter, Gaussian filter for per se, and down sampling is done, and we create a large image from a small image by up sampling like this. We can up sample it, and we can create the image like this. And uh, the difference between the approximation, this approximate, this image, and the predicted image, this you can take this approximate also. This is called the residual image. Let us have some definition. Uh, this uh, G sub J, capital G sub J, let it be the image at the jth level, any jth level. So this is obtained by low pass filtering and down sampling. This is called G G zero and one more one down sample uh, level. This is G one, then G two, and let us assume that G G J K with expansion of this G J K times by up sampling and extrapolating. That means if uh, I I you know up sample G1 G1 one time then it will become G11. If I uh, you know this is this is the way if I if I want to uh, you know this G2 G2 I want to sub sample means one time I want to do it then it will become something like uh, the, this these value the G G21 series this G21 sub uh, up sampling it by one. These are various definitions, and the difference between the J minus one at approximation and the Jth image, that means G zero and G one of one means we have created G one, and we have uh, upsampled it once, so it will become equal to G zero. So this will be the residual image, G zero. And again, same for G one, G two is done uh, upsampled once. This will be L1 and G2. If G3 is up sample one, this will be the residue. So we can construct the original image from these residuals. And this is that is uh, the lowest approximation image. So we just take it and we add this low uh, the lowest approximation image. So residual and lowest approximation image can be added to construct the original image. Now we have this Laplacian uh, pyramid. The residual images are effectively the result of filtering with the Laplacian. Uh, let us recall the Laplacian that is LOG, uh, which is closely approximated by the difference of two Gaussians. That is difference of Gaussians. So when we convolve a down sampled image with a filter, this is equivalent to convolving it with a larger filter, right? This is an example. Uh, these these are uh, you know two image. Pyramids and their statistics. This is a Gaussian pyramid, like this. This is a Gaussian pyramid, but this is the Laplacian uh, pyramid. So you see, this the histogram of this particular image is like this, spread all over. While the this uh, histogram of this image is uh, very well concentrated. So histogram of residual image is clustered around zero. So it's easier to compress. An application of uh, pyramids, image compression, as I just indicated, histogram of a Laplacian image concentrated around uh, zero can represent with fewer bits. Motion analysis, correlation can be used to track objects. A course to find strategy keeps cost low. And texture analysis means estimating the local power spectrum within uh, windows of various size. Uh, window sizes are kept small, and then image planning. Image in a mosaic can be pieced. Together without discontinuities by merging their Laplacian pyramids. Uh, I'll talk about this image splitting. 
This is multi resolution splining. What happens if we mosaic two images? Then the uh, there will be a line. So the images join with a smooth spline will be will look like this. There will be no line. So this image splining is merging two images together such that they have a smooth seam, seamless mosaic image. So uh, you know what we can do is this is a simpler simpler approach. Uh, these are two images. So average the two images in a uh, narrow transition zone like this, and use a waiting wait waiting function uh, wx, which decreases monotonically from left to right like this. So this will be the value, and we just uh, mono wait, decrease monotonically the weight from left to right. And this is how it is seen, uh, you know, step wise curve from left to right. This is a simple approach and uh, these are the two synthetic image of stars but uh, what we have done the next image left image and uh, next to the right image with no splining or merging this we have just applied but what happens there will be a there will be a duplication of stars see there are duplications of stars that duplication of stars will take place so this is also has to be taken care image merged with a narrow transition zone we can also Increase the transition means narrow can be made uh, wider. So this is image merged with wider transition zone, but the features within zone appear double. So if there is a better approach, uh, spline the images as multiple resolution. We spline the image as multiple resolution, and we construct uh, Laplacian pyramids for each image L A and L B. So we then create a spline pyramid by averaging pixels along the center line. And this is the expression. If this uh, is greater than uh, this, uh, L is less than equal to two to the power n minus one. We take the left one. Rather, we take in this case right one. Otherwise, in between, we just add it divided by two. So if we finally reconstruct image from the Laplacian pyramid LS. This is the example. We have combined two very different images. The left image uh, next to the right image, but this is the image merged with the multi-resolution spline. You can see the differences. Uh, we can also just uh, you know mosaicing is uh, one example, but we can also apply it to arbitrary shape features. See, this is a eye. This is a um, hand, and if you want, I want to put this eye on this hand. I can do it. So it is useful to represent and analyze images and signal at more than one resolution. The scale of which is very. So features that might go undetected at one resolution are easy to detect at the another. This image pyramids and wavelets are two possible tools to do multiple resolution. So this was about multi-resolution.